nations. Soon the UN will enthrone as arbiters of global human rights regimes like communist China, communist Cuba, Putin's Russia, and Saudi Arabia. Only the UN would put oppressed people's hopes in such blood-stained hands. Our association with this insanity exacts a steep price. Since 1945, the UN, the United States has been the U.S. largest, the United States has been the UN's largest annual contributor. In 2006, American taxpayers forked over $423.5 million in dues and over $5.3 billion in total sums to the UN. In 2007, Israel, unconditionally and on time, will pay the UN $9 million to its, in its dues, which ranks Israel as among the 27th highest dues-paying members. In addition, Israel will pay the UN separate peacekeeping forces budget $35 million. Nevertheless, Israel, the U.S., and all free nations remain the targets of the U.N. member regimes, internal intrigues, and corrupt practices. Two statistics define this dysfunction. Only 46% of the U.N.'s members are free nations. But the U.N.'s top ten financial contributors are all free nations. In a crystalline instant are the U.N. symptoms manifest, its disease diagnosed, and its prognosis shameful. The UN is a global Tammany Hall lethal to the liberty and dignity of our human family. In our time, we face challenges equivalent to those posed to President Truman. Once more, the United States, Israel, and the entire free world face a global generational war for freedom against vicious enemies bent upon our destruction. To win, our devotion to liberty must transcend their obsession with death. This cannot be accomplished by fecklessly continuing to rely upon a debauched UN for our collective security. Recall Truman. It must be the policy of the United States to support free people who are resisting attempted subjugation by armed minorities or by outside pressures. So it remains in our global age, wherein a world condensed by an internet cannot endure half slave and half free. Our survival at stake, all free nations must prudently diminish their participation in a debased UN and unite in the cause of human dignity and liberty. Encircled at the UN, we've no more time to entreat with the wolves in our mists. Best we hold them at bay in their lair and forge a course for the world's new birth of freedom. Our new course is a liberty alliance. Similar to the community of democracies, which could be transformed into this more focused and potent international organization for freedom. The Liberty Alliance must be founded upon the self-evident truth that all human beings are endowed by their creator with the unalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it must be steeped in the wisdom that extending liberty to the enslaved will ensure liberty for ourselves. The Liberty Alliance must be composed of free nations dedicated to expanding human liberty to peoples yet free. Member nations must meet a mutually agreed upon criteria of human and civil rights. Observer nations must be domestically expanding their people's liberty and upon attaining the agreed upon criteria for membership shall be admitted into the alliance. Importantly, member nations which diminish their people's liberty beyond the agreed upon criteria must be demoted to observer status and when necessary, expelled from the alliance. <clears throat> The governing structure of the Liberty Alliance shall be determined by its member nations with the objective being the maximization of transparency, equity, and democracy in accordance with the effective expansion of liberty and dignity. In accordance with Truman's doctrine, the Alliance must, quote, must assist free peoples to work out their own destinies in their own ways. Ergo, the Alliance's emphasis must be upon liberty, wherein human beings individually and communally shape the future, form, and functions of their representative institutions, not upon abstract notions of uniformity, like, quote, Western democracy or democratic capitalism, presumptuous and too often destabilizing impositions upon people trying to seize their freedom and shape their destinies as they see fit. After all, Americans have a president and a Congress, and Israel has a prime minister and a Knesset. Both peoples are siblings in liberty. Heeding Truman's assessment, quote, the seeds of totalitarian regimes are nurtured by misery and want, poverty and strife, and reach their full growth when the hope of a people for a better life has died. In order to foster liberty, the alliance must advance human liberty and dignity through diplomatic, political, economic, and cultural initiatives aimed at empowering and emancipating the individual, their communities, and their emerging democratic governments from dictatorial rule. The alliance must not have a military component but member and observer nations will retain their powers to continue or commence security agreements with other free nations through bilateral and multilateral treaties. 
never must any member or observer nation's rights be infringed upon by the alliance now to sanguine hopes first the u s and israel will lead the establishment of the liberty alliance and secondly the liberty alliance's headquarters shall be sited on the free soil once scarred by colonialism communism fascism world wars and the holocaust i speak of eastern europe where cradled in the intrepid human spirit liberty's lamp triumphantly pierced these benighted recesses of evil in heralding the liberty alliance we do not invite the free world to exit the un especially by participating in a democracy caucus the united states israel and all free nations should remain in the un to advance or defend liberty by keeping her enemies close but we must not be so mad as to pay through the nose to get kicked in our assets <laughs> So a simple proposal, no free nation will pay more to the UN than its lowest paying tyrants, like North Korea and Burma, who only contribute $170,660 to the UN's regular budget. <laughs> free nations' monies and personnel spared from the UN shall be dedicated to the Liberty Alliance. In conclusion, doubtless discompobulated global sophisticates will decry the Liberty Alliance as undesirable and or impossible. They are overwrought and best ignored. For as we know, the day is short, the task is great, but we will not withdraw from it. The United States, Israel, and all free peoples are cemented and steeled by the harmonic bonds of liberty, comedy, and duty. Like Harry Truman and the greatest generations of both nations to date, we will not bend, we will not break, in our reason to faith in a future graced by free nations. We will keep that hope alive. Toiling our way up to that day, may God grant all free peoples the strength to be as he, in Marie Sirkin's verse, the strongest. I'll be the strongest to bid you, not lightning stream or mountain blue, but dew that falling to the earth gives birth. I'll be the strongest in my hour, and lofty tree and quiet flower, will both drink gratefully from me. I'll be the strongest in the land. I'll be the word that heals, the hand that unseen and still, as from above, gives love. May it be, and may God continue to grace, guard, guide, and bless the United States, Israel, and our entire human family. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman. That was uh, very inspiring. We have time for just a few questions. Uh, if you have the microphone, please. Um, um, looking for the microphone. Does anyone have a microphone? Well, if not, please go ahead. Well, part of the problem in the past was there was no real constructive alternative. You, what you would have is people would excuse the UN, and we talked about this earlier, they would say that, well, the process is horrible, but at least we're part of a process and we have to pay for it. I said this was akin to someone being beaten, uh, not wanting to stop the beating because they felt they needed to be part of the process. That, which, which strikes me as completely dysfunctional. What we need is a better alternative. We need a liberty alliance, one committed to that, one that does what President Roosevelt envisioned and what Harry Truman believed could be possible over time. But when you talk about it, look, if you want democracy amongst voting nations at the United Nations General Assembly and elsewhere, then I think we should have an equality of contribution to the UN period. I do not believe that anybody acquainted with politics would say to themselves, I despise this political organization, yet I'm going to continue to give it my hard-earned dollars so that I can feel a part of the process. Why do we enter the realm of diplomacy and all of a sudden rationality is thrown out the window? I think that if we have a better alternative focus on it, just like Truman did with the creation of NATO and other institutions to face the Cold War, 
I think the United States will be better off in what is our war for freedom against these individuals who will destroy everything.